Haiti's murderous voodoo president, Papa Doc Duvalier. Francois Papa Doc Duvalier was one of the worst dictators both his country and the world have ever seen. During his regime, which lasted from 1957 to 1971, the nation of Haiti saw its population beaten, tortured, murdered, and starved in order to subjugate the people to Duvalier's will. Relying on an aura of mysticisms and voodooism, the dictator would claim his primary intention was to destabilize the mixed-race elite in order to promote the prosperity of the poor black majority population they dominated. In order to achieve his goals, he committed many atrocities that the rest of the world, sadly, turned a blind eye to for far too long. But who actually was Papa Doc Duvalier? Born April 14, 1907 to humble beginnings, his life would take Duvalier from the halls of medical school to the pulpits of political authority. Although politically active from a young age, Papa Doc Duvalier actually first trained to be a physician, looking to help eradicate the awful disease yaws that was an epidemic among Haiti's black majority population. During his medical career, he spent some time working in the U.S. Army, helping to reduce the number of yaws victims. But at the same time, Duvalier never forgot his desire to change Haiti. He wrote journals on black nationalism and the rise of the common black majority against the Europeanized elite. This and his work helping to treat yaws endeared him to the black population and earned him the nickname Papa Doc. Perhaps seeing its advantages, he relied heavily on the nickname politically, using it to advance stories of his voodoo roots and later claims of mysticism. Hey Simple History fans, with the vast digital world around us, I've been in search of a new browser that can not only streamline my workflow, but enhance my browsing experience. It's how I stumbled upon the new Opera desktop browser. Now here's the thing, I've got multiple interests, whether I'm buying stuff on Amazon or checking out Airbnb stays, I've got a ton of tabs open. With Opera's tab islands, my life got way easier. Tabs get organized into these groups or islands, so no more clutter. But hang on, you know how we use different messenger and music apps? Opera Desktop integrates them all. Spotify, Apple Music, WhatsApp, Telegram, everything in one piece. And as for me, I value online privacy. Opera's free VPN and ad blocker are game changers. Now let's talk AI. Meet Aria, Opera's browser AI. Quickly highlight some text and Aria can explain, explore, or even translate it for me. That's pretty cool, right? Remember, it's not just about browsing, it's about enhanced, smooth, and efficient online experiences. Try out Opera Desktop for yourselves. Check out the link in the description to download Opera Desktop for free, and you'll see the difference for yourselves. Here's to a better browsing future. Meanwhile, Haiti's government was becoming more and more unstable, until a 1950 coup replaced the sitting president, Dumarsay Esteem, who was sympathetic to the black population with a much less sympathetic Colonel Paul Magloire. Duvalier clearly saw the opportunity many others did, taking the time to build his political allegiance and mystic image. By 1956, Magloire was deposed, and within the next six months, five provisional governments rose and fell, and Duvalier campaigned hard to become the next leader of Haiti. By the end of the 1957 campaign, he swept the elections with 679,000 votes to just 266,000 and 9,000 respectively for his political rivals. Sadly, this was nothing short of disastrous for Haiti's future, as within months, Papa Doc's true nature became evident. Almost immediately after gaining power, Papa Doc set to oppressing his opposition by arresting over a hundred political figures in the first month alone. Businesses that closed in Port-au-Prince in protest of Duvalier's ascension were looted, and soon anti-Duvalier publications and newspapers found their offices destroyed. Cleverly, Papa Doc also crafted a climate of uncertainty and instability among leaders on his own side. He continuously deposed and replaced his top military leaders in order to prevent any organized resistance or coup rhetoric, and created his own Garde Présidentielle, whose loyalty were to him, not the country of Haiti. Not unlike Hitler's Gestapo, these secret police, better known as the Tonton Makuts, were harbingers of oppression, torture, and murder. 
the Tonton Makuts was made up of the black majority population and worked to help cultivate Papa Doc's voodooist image. Their name was based on Haiti's traditional boogeyman, and they always appeared wearing dark glasses, dark clothes, and carrying bulging holsters. Altogether, they gave off a mysterious, sinister, and supernatural vibe, which played perfectly into Duvalier's own. Papa Doc would deliberately dress as the Guardian of Graveyards, known as Baron Samity, a spirit that was directly linked to voodooism, something which in turn appealed to the voodoo faithful among the population. The reality of the Tonton, however, was even darker than the story of the Boogeyman. Estimated to have had 25,000 members by 1959, they not only gunned down Duvalier's political rivals, but burnt people alive, executed many without trial, and even desecrated the bodies of the dead with opponents' heads set on ice and sent to the royal palace to display as a reminder of Papa Doc's hold on Haiti. They were indiscriminately violent, often sexually assaulted women without consequence, and frequently extorted and blackmailed Haitians. On other occasions, they'd even randomly string up bodies in marketplaces to show the complete freedom from law that Tonton enjoyed. Any opposition was small and quickly quashed. One of the most notable of these was a 1958 coup attempt that saw former officers, several U.S. mercenaries, and three ex-deputy sheriffs from the U.S. land in Haiti in an attempt to free the country from Duvalier's grip. Unfortunately, once the size of their small troop was discovered, they were mercilessly killed by Duvalier's men. A year later, Duvalier suffered a heart attack that left him incapacitated for four months. During this time, Barbeau, head of the Tontons, took over day-to-day -day running of Haiti, putting down an invasion of Cuban and exiled Haitian guerrillas, and negotiating with the U.S. Unfortunately for Barbeau, in doing so, he signed his own death warrant. Upon recovering, Duvalier became increasingly suspicious of Barbeau's motives, concluding he was seeking to usurp his authority. As the leader of the all-powerful Tontons, Papa Doc recognized Barbeau's power and influence and suppressed it by calling him a traitor and imprisoning him for 18 months in the infamous Fort de Manche, a place where some of the most notorious Tonton crimes, torture, and murders took place during Duvalier's reign. It was also in Fort de Manche that Duvalier reportedly took pleasure in seeing atrocious acts carried out for himself. According to several accounts, Papa Doc put peepholes in torture chambers and participated in plunging men and women into baths of sulfuric acid, involving himself personally in some of the very worst forms of torture that occurred during his reign. After his release, Barbeau was thoroughly done with Duvalier's antics and actually did then launch a counter-assault on the president. In response, Duvalier spread rumors that Barbeau could appear as a great big black dog, tragically leading to their culling across Haiti. Eventually, the Tontons and military cornered Barbeau and his conspirators, putting an end to the revolt by executing them where they stood. Like any president, Papa Doc had to deal with re-election, but as per his tyrannical regime, rigged it in his favor. In 1961, he was unanimously re-elected in a campaign where he won 1.3 million votes to zero. By now, the true depths of Duvalier's delusional self-perception were fully apparent. It was in 1961 that he also ordered the construction of what he called Duvalierville, which was essentially an entire village intended to stand as a testament to his regime, to be built through forced donations by government officials. The project, however, was never completed. Over the next few years, invasions and coups continued, each one successfully put down by Duvalier and the Tontons using his militia to massacre hundreds of families and brutally destroy communities in their rampage of terror. By 1964, Papa Doc sought to consolidate his power once and for all. After another corrupt referendum, in which there were only spaces to choose yes on the ballot, Duvalier named himself Haiti's President of Life, effectively ending the democratic farce the country still labored under. Among one of his more bizarre propagandist choices was a complete rewrite of the Lord's Prayer to be about himself, forcing schoolchildren to recite the new version. Our Doc, who art in the National Palace for Life, hallowed be thy name in the present and future generations. Thy will be done at Port-au-Prince and in the provinces. 
give us this day our new Haiti. You get the point. In similar fashion, Papa Doc would also claim himself to be comparable to Dessalines, De Gaulle, Lenin, Mao Zedong, and even Christ himself. He gave himself new titles such as the Apostle of National Unity and Worthy Heir to the Founders of the Haitian Nation, and the National Palace was lit up with his message, I am the Haitian flag, one and indivisible. But despite his tyranny and even some popularity among the black majority, Duvalier's reign was not to last much longer. Suffering from ill health, on April 21, 1971, Duvalier passed away, and his son, nicknamed Baby Doc, took up his mantle. Although it's unclear precisely how many Haitians suffered under Duvalier's cruelty, which was continued with his son, estimated numbers for those killed stand between 30 to 60,000. He will forever be remembered as the voodoo dictator that scarred both the Haitian population and any prosperity it had started to nurture.